What is good? Don't be eyeballing me, dog. I just feel like Ace Ventura in the stall trying to find that missing stone. <laughs> the eyeball of me, dog. Who the hell is that? <laughs> Who the hell is that? That. <laughs> Who the hell is that? Well, that's Jay Wayne. I'm, Ke- I'm, I'm Casey. <laughs> How you doing? You all right? I'm okay. How you about ready yourself? To roll? We got a long discussion to get into, I feel like. This could could go could could go on into the morning hours, I feel. The wee, the wee hours? Yeah. So, I hope we can figure something out because I don't know what to do. If you're if you just joining us and clicked on this from the mock, I appreciate y'all. If you're watching this as a solo video, we're basically here to just talk about this sophomore class of running backs, kind of the tier where we have them, and basically like we've gone through and done some research and just talk. We want to talk about the situation a little bit. I'd be foolish to come in here and talk staunchly about like, oh yeah, this guy's definitely going to be better than this guy. And you know, it's gotta be this guy, this guy or this guy. But like, I've, I've taken the time, Jay Wayne's taking the time to just you go through this and kind of figure out, you know, who we best like right at this minute. And you know, man, from the top to the bottom, I've been waxing and waning. It depends on the day, man. Right. And we've done a million mocks. We're doing mocks multiple times a week. Hit us up on Patreons. Uh, we got There's a Discord channel. There's one guy channel. for sure for me that is 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 my guy out of all these guys. Um, but Let then me finish my Patreon plug. Okay. If you guys want to join us on these mocks, right? We're gonna throw up the mock draft that we've been referencing that we've done videos on and we've done live. We're doing live mocks. Mostly uh, we started doing those weekly. If you guys want to be a part of that, come come over to Patreon. Get your Discord login. And, and join us in these mocks because we're we're mocking it up because because this is where you need to fuck it up not in a real draft you need right. to fuck it up in the mock so you don't fuck it up in the startup so back to as you as you well, were saying. so this this you know if you're if you're watching this as a solo video this came from a mock and we just wanted to you know this is a, a spot where you got these sophomore running backs and we just wanted to give you some information on them and tell you how we kind of stand on them no big co on this one um hopefully we'll catch them on a couple of these other next videos that that are spinoffs off this mock um but let's just jump right into it so cam Akers was one six in here he's currently probably out of all of these guys the highest rated sophomore uh running back and if there's one thing that I think we both can agree on and tell you for sure is that Cam's got to be at the back of this list, right? I feel I feel like for me right now, he was coming into rookie drafts. And for me right now, yeah, I think he mostly is at the back for me. And I, and I, I'm not hating on Cam Akers. It's just, just, just how I feel inside. <laughs> okay, Dave Chappelle. <laughs> Um, so right now, it's, Cam Akers just seems pretty polarizing at the moment, you know? Yeah. Because uh, he's, I don't want to hate, we're not trying to hate on Cam Akers. No, not at right? all. We're not hating. I just, I just can't, there's no chance I can take him at 1-6. Mm, it's just not mm, happening. Mm, mm. It's too high. He belongs back in the in the group with all these other guys. Right. Whether, whether it's last, first, third, fourth, fifth, how, you know, how, he just doesn't belong that far out in front of this group, in my opinion. Right. Um, so and people feel confident about taking him at one right. six. I, well, someone commented on our last video about uh, a list of guys that went in order, and he went ahead of uh, I think Dalvin Cook and Kamara. Like, yeah, woo, woo. And Rick and I, I, I can I can sort of understand it, and we'll we'll put some pieces together of of why and how. But like, I can't understand it. I can. We'll get there. All right. DeAndre Swift was ahead of. Cam Akers for absolutely in the beginning of this offseason as far as at least the ADPs that I was looking at and the the the, the, the mocks we did you know last offseason when we were yeah. doing this process last year and evaluating these rookies the only guy we had Cam Akers in front of was Antonio Gibson right because he only had 78 total touches you know 77 77 <laughs> whatever I was trying to give him an extra one <laughs> There's probably like a, a kick return or something of sorts. Of yeah, thing. maybe we can get an extra one. But, but you know, you didn't have to take Antonio Gibson in the top five picks of your last year's startup draft. We, you did have to take Cam Akers and there. In pretty much every home league that we're in, where it's or big money league that we're in, it was all five running right. backs pretty much off the board. And we all we had Akers at five. We had JT, Clyde, Swift, and JK ahead of Akers, and. I still do. I, I concur. And let me get Gibson. 
now. We'll we'll see. Over over Maybe. Cam. I don't know. Let me get Gibson. <sighs> well, we got we got. Let's, this is, I just I want to get this out now because this is the only thing I know for sure. Let's break down. <laughs> the rest let's of break this down shit, some situations. Know. Tell everybody you okay. know kind of where we're at here and right. and uh, see where we go. So we'll start with Cam. Obviously, Swift ADP wise, at least in the beginning of this off season, was ahead of Cam Akers. And then they bring in uh, Jamal Williams. And then Anthony Lynn makes the comment about 1A, 1B kind of stuff with all that. And all of a sudden, DeAndre Swift gets pushed pushed back. And Cam Akers catapults vaults ahead since the Olympics are here. We'll go with vault. Mm. Um, yeah, Cam is sitting at RB6. Right. 10 overall in the ADP for DLF. And there's just a lot of talk about Swift losing touches. Um, and we can all see how that offense could struggle to score points. Um, and this has all led to the ADP being a bit down for Swift. Um, now, whether that's right or wrong, we can kind of table that part or now. But Akers has definitely jumped ahead of him. And for me personally, and I think you kind of feel the same way, I kind of wish Big Co was here to just so we wouldn't be so on the same page on this general thing here. Um, was As I feel like the competition for Akers right now out of almost all of these guys is probably the stiffest out right. of any of them. Yeah, like Daryl Henderson. So we need to talk about Daryl now? Daryl Henderson to talk about outscored him. Now, take that for what it was. Akers was hurt through his rookie through the rookie offseason, and there was lots of factors that, that went into that. Um, but Daryl Henderson, going back, and, and I watched some Daryl Henderson games, and I watched mm. some Swift games. I went back and I did all that. And, and Henderson looked like he was so electric and there were so many good things to like about what he was doing. Just had a couple of banged up, nicked up spots and then going into that big playoff spot where all eyes were on Cam Akers. There was no Daryl Henderson because Akers or uh, Daryl Henderson hurt his ankle uh, in week 16 or 17 and was not able to play. And Akers went out there and was a big part of the Rams getting past the Seahawks. Um Akers had a couple of good games along the way, but Daryl Henderson was also good, and I believe he outscored him on the season. I just I think that's the stiffest competition, and part of my rationale here in my stupid brain was basically like, Sean McVay just saw how, hey, I just rode Gurley into the dirt, and now he was no good. I feel like maybe he'll just keep drafting running backs in the second round and keep doing that. But like... I feel like you have two good players and yeah, all the talk and all the loves for Cam Akers right now, but Daryl Henderson is just is too good to keep off the field. And I feel like, yeah, sure. If they give if they give Cam Akers twenty five carries a game, he's absolutely gonna be worth what yep. you're paying for him. But right. I just I'm just not sure that that's going to be the case, at least week in, week out. Um, and I'm not saying that he still can't be good, and I'm not hating on him. I think Cam Akers is plenty good. I think Daryl Henderson is also really good. Daryl Henderson is not getting enough respect. And when we we, we watched some of those games together with Daryl Henderson and then watched some Cam Akers, and it's like there's not really a fall off with Daryl Henderson. If anything, his tape look a little better, if you ask me. Just ha- had some more juice to it. There was more electricity, and that's what I've been missing from Cam Akers is because when you watch his college tape, he had a terrible offensive line, terrible situation, terrible team. You know, to his credit, he didn't quit. That was uh, a good argument made on his behalf, but not the only argument that should be made. But, like, you would see him just clouds of dust, clouds of dust, and then, boom, a 75-yard touchdown run. Just electricity down the field, and and you're like, whoa, you know, this dude has some juice. You didn't really see that in the NFL. Now, granted, he was – He's a rookie, and, and and he started off slow and was banged up, but Did, he didn't he, see that juice. He, he had didn't like look one particularly good at the beginning run. of the season because I think he had a slow, he had no great off season, but then he did look better down the stretch, and he then he one, did like get some spotlight like shine, sh- shined on him through in a couple of spots when Henderson was nicked up and banged up. And and I'm not hate, I don't want to hate on Cam Akers at all. Like I think he is good, but you're right. Like there is definitely it's more. F- there's he, more electricity in the air when when Henderson's running and right, which, which and he been, and he was a second year player, so he got the you know and can make and and McVeigh gushes about Acres and he's the darling right now, so I get it. Like in the court of public opinion, it's all about Acres right now, um, and but, and and I can understand that. Like again, why the public like McVeigh is of offensive guru like if the if whoever is getting the most touches in that offense at the running back position is going to be good pretty much regardless of who they are and both of these guys happen to be very good players so that's the allure here and and McVeigh has never had Matt Stafford like never 
This never happened. Right. Like he he had Jared Goff, who he was mostly kind of propping up, and Jared Goff is just fine, but he's not Matt Stafford. Uh, so the whole dynamic changes, and I get it. Like I, I can understand that, but I just am not convinced that it's just going to be the Cam Akers show. And right. I think, and at one six, that's what you're drafting. Right, you're drafting peak Cam Akers, and and I just. I just don't see how they could keep Daryl Henderson off the field because you can't even make the argument that Cam's a better pass catcher. Right. Because Daryl Henderson was crushing in the passing game. Right. Last year. Yeah. So, so looking fantastic. Right. So you know we talked a little bit about Najee Harris a minute ago in the video and his situation. Um, if we get into the Rams a little bit, we talked about Najee and how the Steelers are maybe trying to rebirth, reboot that offensive line. Well, when you look at the Rams right now they didn't do anything in the in the offseason here to to really do anything with this offensive line they lose Austin Blythe to the Chiefs Um, they decide to pass on some of the top centers in the draft in the second and third round and by the way they drafted like Tutu Atwell with one of those picks which you know and then McVay on the subject basically says he feels comfortable with the room he has a lot of guys that played a lot of meaningful snaps in this roster obviously that's how you feel you didn't do anything right like so you You back up what you said and 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 hey you you've done your thing you are you've earned the benefit of the doubt to be able to put together a good offensive line and a run game with kind of whomever you're putting out there now um, they do have Austin Corbett still. He could slide to center, uh, but he apparently didn't have a great showing at his time with the Browns at that position. They have Andrew Whitworth, who's 100, uh, but still playing <laughs> very well. Um, and well, he's also 100. <laughs> yeah, and Note Boom showed that he could hack it in replacing Whitworth, uh, but he could also slide into that guard position. Uh, then they have Havistein, um, who. You know, he's on the other side. He showed some improvement last year after poor showing the year before. That's according to PFF. Um, And, man, it's just this O-line could get dicey without – they didn't invest anything in the future of this. Now, next year they're going to have to go in. And and the Rams kind of fly season by season, seat of their pants, which I'm not – I'm never going to hate on teams for going all in and doing what the Rams do and kind of living year by year and kind of figuring it out. I like the aggressive nature of what they're doing. Right. Has has McVay ever had a first-round pick? You know, he's traded them all. He traded for Brandon Cooks, traded for Jalen Ramsey. But they don't have anything in the hopper – to me right now and then doing research of saying that this offensive line should be good for a long time to come. Now McVay is going to be good at coaching an offense for the long time to come and it'll ebb and flow. The league will catch up to what he's doing. He'll have to change up what he's doing it's and how he's happened. doing Belichick it. It's happened. Did it in the Super Bowl. Yeah, well it's happened and then he got better and then it happened and it got better. I mean, and, and if you're really good like everyone says he is, which he is, you're going to continue to figure out ways to, to get better and do different things. Um, which, you know, they have done. So he's, again, earned the benefit of the doubt in that situation in my mind. But I just I just don't see Cam Akers being the just the the one AA here in this offense. And that's why I don't have him as being and we'll we'll discuss it as we get further down the line here. You want to move on to the next guy? Sure, you, you I would say I would, I would want last closing argument would be it's we'll not recap it at the end it's about not where we just are. Just that you know, I think Daryl Henderson is so good. It's that I don't think Cam showed me as much as these other sophomores showed me. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe, right. maybe, maybe that's wrong. Maybe, maybe I, it just, just feels well, like a ton watch, of, this feels like a ton of projection. And at one six, man, I can't be projecting like that. No, he needs to be back in that pack with these guys. Yeah. All Which right. I just, on the last video, I said I could take Najee Harris at one six. I'm definitely projecting there, but like. Yeah. I'm not. I also said I wasn't gonna do it. I said I could, but For I'm sure. not going to. Yeah, I don't know what we're talking about here. So let's move to the next guy. Let's, let's go, do it. Let's go. We got to move let's along. Let's go. Ceh. All right. And for me, Eatler. Clyde Edwards. Eatler. I like to say it as an umpire. Yeah. Um. Oh man, one this day is, this is probably one of my favorite guys out of all the sophomores. I think right now, currently, spoiler alert, probably putting him at the top. If I was an umpire, I'd just be like. <laughs> We're going back to Washington, taking White House. Ha! So we we just talked about the Rams and their situation at offensive line and being kind of offensive line broke, uh, but but the situation that they have now is just fine. Whereas the Chiefs have everything in the world, and then they went and and just took a completely opposite approach because they just saw what happens when you don't have offensive line depth right. and you get to the pinnacle and they're not available and you're going against the and, nasty front. 
so they just took the opposite approach. They cut Fisher and Schwartz, who were, were guys in that that have been there for a long time. And everybody's like, what are they doing? How are they doing that? Well, then they go and do this. They sign Joe Tooney. They bring back Kyle Long off the couch and get him back in the game. Now, Kyle Long is a ridiculous athlete, had some bad luck with injuries on the Bears. Now he comes back. He's had a little bit more bad luck injury wise. I couldn't really necessarily find out, but he's been a little got a little nicked up in minicamp here. Then guess what they do? They sign Austin Blythe from the Rams, like I just said. Again, taking the opposite approach. The, the Chiefs are all world everything. Everybody thinks they're the best team ever, and they're just they're 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 taking the complete opposite approach. They trade for Orlando Brown, who was untap, unhappy as a right tackle in Baltimore, wanted to get to that left tackle position. Now they traded away their end of their first round draft and some other picks to go ahead and sure up what could be a long term left tackle for the Chiefs. Uh, then they go and they, they, they get back the Canadian doctor, DeVernay Taft, who went up to Canada to serve his country to, for the COVID times and, and just decided not to play. But he comes back. He played really well the season before. Then they had a draft pick, Lucas Nying, Nag, I don't know how to pronounce it, 6'6", 315. He was a third round pick out of TCU who opted out in 2020. Uh, but Big Red is really excited about this large human. I've just read so many quotes and so many uh, cut-ups about Andy Reid talking about how this guy is really just showing out and being and being really strong for them. And then on top of that, they go and spend their second round pick on Creed Humphrey, a center out of OU who was regarded widely as one of the best centers in the draft. And then in their sixth round, they go ahead and pick up Trey Smith, a guard from Tennessee. So they're basically saying we are not letting what happened in the Super Bowl ever happen again. Clyde, 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 and Clyde. Let me get that Clyde, dog. Like Absolutely. This is I love this approach by them. Yeah, sure. The offense runs through Kelsey and, and Tyreek Hill. To Clyde Edwards Alaire, we didn't even we saw in game one them actually feed him and and saw what he could do and saw the explosiveness, the shiftiness, the not being able to tackle this. They didn't even throw it to him in that game. We by the end of the season, we we didn't even touch the surface of, of how the potential of what Clyde Edwards could be in this offense. And I think they're realizing that hey, we need to protect our guys. We're gonna do some more stuff in the passing game. That's why we drafted this guy. Like through week, I believe it was week 13, maybe 13 or 12 or 14. He was still an RB one Clyde Edwards, Hilaire. like he, there was a week or two where he fell out of that spot where he was 14 or 13 through those weeks. But this is a, he, and he's wasn't even being talked about as being that great. And he was, he was an RB one, which means he was a top 12 running back in the NFL. And he wasn't even coming close to touching that potential of where he could be the red zone. He was inefficient in week one. He could have scored four touchdowns. He didn't score yeah. any touchdowns. And then through the rest of the season, it was kind of a common theme. He can get better in that regard. He can be a mismatch for those guys. Now they got a better offensive line. Like he got stoned a couple of times. He could be fucking fantastic in the red zone. And you know the Chiefs are going to be in the red zone. This is the most elite offense in the league, bar none. And right. all they did was lose assets as far as, you know, Sammy's, Sam, Sammy's out of there. So that was an asset. So yeah, now you can you can put in Nicole Hardman. They got your, go, your guy Cornell Powell out of, uh, out of Clemson there. Um, Noah Gray is making some, some noise right now as maybe they're going to run some more two tight end sets. Good. Run more two tight end sets. More Clyde. More Clyde. More Clyde. Like huge value out of, right out now. Out of all of these guys, there isn't a fucking nether running back on the Chiefs that I'm even remotely worried about of being anywhere near what Clyde Edwards Alaire is. There's Daryl Henderson with, uh, Cam Akers. There's Gus Edwards, where Gus Edwards certainly isn't on the level of J.K. Dobbins, but there's there's some concern there. There's uh, Jamal Williams. Jamal Williams certainly isn't a, a fantastic running back, but he's there. Right. All these guys have issues. J.D. McKissick had 110 targets last year with the Redskins. Like, they all have issues. Clyde is in the best situation and has the least amount of competition behind him. Clyde's the number one sophomore for me. And, and you know, I got no problem taking him in the first round, but you don't have to, so I won't. Right. So I said earlier, if there's one thing I do know about these sophomores is that I want Cam at the end. I, there's two things I know, and I'm with you, is that Clyde's the beginning. Clyde needs to be the first sophomore off the board on your list. And if you look at DLF ADP, he's at 25. Right. At RB 16. That's 3 1. Ridiculous. And there's no chance. I, I mean, if you could get him at the end of the second round. 
I've After said, getting like a top guy, you know, one of those top five running backs and pair him up with Clyde, that is just marvelous. I've said all offseason, this is my, this has been my number one target. you got to get Clyde. The disrespect is ridiculous. This mm-hmm. guy has done nothing but be, like I said, an RB1 through like week 12, and then he was out week 13, and then missed week 16 and was a little nicked up here and there. But this guy has everything that you want on a great offense, and we should be chasing Kansas City's you know, I Points, get it. Every, everything right. everything runs through Kelsey and, and Hill. I get it. Like I understand that. But like CEH is gonna make an impact on this offense this year. And he was making an impact for your fantasy team. Right. Uh and and you know, just he was just for, fine for he whatever just, reason. He didn't. You guys were so mad at Jonathan Taylor for so much of the season, so and then he long. finishes high. So now it's okay. Right now, he's hey, I was, two. I'm with you. I'm all in on Jonathan Taylor. I was telling you, stop being fucking ridiculous and just be patient. Mm-hmm. But now you guys are completely out on Clyde edwards helaire Doesn't make any sense. Get Clyde edwards helaire He's right. the number one sophomore for me. They're mad because they were taking him at one five last year. And it right. didn't pan out as much as other guys, which we didn't want to take him at one five. It was like, damn, we love Clyde edwards helaire In a startup. Right. We love Clyde before the draft. And then when the draft hit, it was like, damn, I guess I'm not going to get any Clyde because now everybody has elevated him so high that I just, it was, he was just, it was like the beers are so expensive. It was (laughs) $6.40. It's crazy. Like I just couldn't pay that much for Clyde. But now you're going to, you're going to tell me I can get him at three, one. That's at, it's ridiculous. Holler at me. And I'm down now to take him at one six. If I have to, like I, I, I could take him at one six, like fuck it. Yeah. What are you going to do? I guess you should take one of the wide receivers, but I mean, I'm, he he's he should be the RB six, I think. I agree. I'm telling you, he's the if you, if, you, if the public's saying Cam's got to be this guy up here, I'm I'm saying it's Clyde. Um, and I'm not saying I needed to want to take any of those guys at one six, which is why again why one six is my and and the seven eight area is the trade back trade right. back right. Figure it we, out. Figure out how to try to get two picks between the one eleven and the two six area and grab two of those running backs. That's what I want. That's what I want to do. I like all those guys. Let me get them. And it's not that I dislike AJ Brown, Jefferson, and and DK Metcalf. It just again gets so fucking dry with the running backs after the third middle of the fourth round that I want running backs and I want these younger running backs as much as I can get. And then in the third or fourth round, then I can get a Josh Jacobs and Montgomery, uh, whichever one of those guys slips up a little bit. I can get another one of those guys and then I can draft 10 straight receivers. Right. I still feel okay. Like I should take DK, you know, over these guys. Sure. That's fine. If you can't get anything done, the value on DK, AJ Brown and Justin Jefferson makes sense there. I don't want to take, I don't, I don't don't think I could take Justin Jefferson. I don't think he's going to be, Ever that's higher value than this, but that's a, that's but a different conversation. Is, is Clyde for a different your RB six? Is Clyde the sixth running back you want to take? Off I'm not a hundred percent sure. I'm quite there yet, but yeah, I mean, I think so. Yeah. I think so. I think Zeke deserves some talking there, and and Chubb oh, deserves talking wants to there hear as well. Um, and Zeke sucks. Nobody wants to hear that, right? So no, yeah, but that's why you got to trade back because Zeke's back there, Chubb's back there. Najee's back there, and all these sophomores should be back there. And they sure, if you want to take Acres, one more better pick for me. Which we talked about Zeke and how much of a value he is in the in the video that spawned this video in that main mock draft. So be sure you check so that out. So let's keep it rolling through the rest of these sophomores so we can get somewhere tonight and not be up until three. Yeah. Um, so let's go. Let's go to the Lions. Let's talk a little bit about Clyde edwards alaire Swift. Um, yeah, sorry. Clyde edwards alaire is <laughs> on the brain. Uh, let's talk a little bit about DeAndre Swift here, who was fairly reliable. Nothing, cr- no crazy big spikes. A couple of games here or there where he did have uh, a decent game log, but it was just fairly reliable. Just didn't quite get the usage that you wanted out of him. It definitely week seemed in, week out. more efficient than what the points per touch are, per points per opportunity, which was over a fantasy point a, a mm-hmm. touch, which that's pretty damn good. If you're going to get me 1.1 fantasy points per touch, that's pretty strong, and it's like they they would never commit to him. I don't I don't think he had more than sixteen carries in any game, and that was by far the most carries he had. Yeah, um, yeah, he had sixteen carries in week ten. He had fifteen carries in week fifteen, and fourteen carries, and like those, and then ten and twelve. He barely was cracking double digit carries, and this man was averaging. Let's see how many points per game. It was it was it was a decent like fourteen point six points per game. Which, and here's the thing. It's and fantastic. Maybe, and maybe he doesn't eclipse too many of those times 
again. Maybe the 15, 16 is like the, the benchmark of where you're trying to live here. Well, yeah, and but Jamal, you're probably not Jamal gonna Williams have... gets gets those uh, get gets some touches in here. But uh, the targets is there is nobody else to throw the ball to besides Hawkinson. So right. this guy could just soak up targets and and talking. Go ahead. What do you got? Well, to the to the carry point, maybe he doesn't. Maybe he averages fifteen carries a game, but you're not going to see stat lines like you see last year where it's three carries, five carries, four carries, nine carries, six carries, seven no, carries. You're no. not ever... That's You can forget that. Agreed. He's going to double that shit. He's going to get at least 15 carries a right. game. And like you said, I mean, he was catching the shit out of the ball last year. He had five well, receptions, that's what, that's four, what made him four, get you four, those, three, three, ten, five, those right. 10, 11 points each week for the most part where right. you were counting on those. And it was, uh, you know... And he's got some freak ability. You right. know what I mean? He can get fucking loose, which he didn't do a ton of. But I, I'm not going to... But but I'm not going to knock him for that like I did Akers because that offense wasn't as good. You know what I mean? Like, it sh- like right. th- there is freak ability in that Rams offense that you should be seeing come to fruition. Swift so, has that too. Yeah, but as good as a situation as the Rams is, you can flip it around and be like, well, they're going to ride their running backs most of the game. And then if it gets out of hand, Swift is going to be the guy who they're just going to, he's going to get a whole bunch of just garbage targets that are going to be fantastic for your fantasy team. And he can do something with them. Anthony Lynn basically curated Austin Eckler. I like that. Um, Good point. And, and Austin Eckler. Anthony Lynn's now the coordinator. Now for, the coordinator. And I know he. it's trendy to hate uh, Anthony Lynn listen, because he apparently sucks. Well, he probably sucks as a head coach. He cannot make the right call at the end of the game not, but, about how to manage timeouts and shit. I love that man and when... When you listen to him speak and, right. and how he is around those guys, like I love everything about the way sure. he goes about his business. And now you know yes, he's going to get his probably men to isn't buy the in. best head coach, right? But he, th- those men are going to respect Anthony Lynn, right? As as far as a human, I love I love the way he talks to those guys. I love mm-hmm. the way he, I love his uh, personality. Uh, yeah, and you the, saw that in, in Hard Knocks. The really- Chargers were second in running back targets last year, 156, and Eckler had 65 of those, and Eckler missed a ton of time, like. Absolutely Damn. ridiculous. Swift had 57 and and last year targets, and the Lions had 106 total. But like, you could pretty much guarantee they don't have anybody else to fucking throw to, man. Outside of uh, Hawkinson, Hawkinson. Like, Amon Ross, St. Brown, right? St. Brown, who's a rookie. Tyrell Williams, you know, uh, Cephas, uh, Cephas, Geronimo Allison, like yeah, in garbage. Like yeah, not only is DeAndre Swift going to get the some quality touches in that offense for for the quality times that they are in quality positions, but he's also going to get just the trashiest touches because they're going to try to grind games out. They absolutely are. What they're trying to do and set up, they're trying to win trenches, and we're about to get in this offensive line, and they're trying to win trenches on the defense and rebuild that defense, and that's what they're that's their goal. I like the uh, I like the GM situation, and nobody likes the head coach, but I like what they just did in the in the draft. They just said, hey, we're we're planting. We're going to rebrand the trenches and we're going to build from the inside from out. The and I inside like that. Out. And I feel like, yeah, they're not going to be in the red zone as much as maybe some of these other teams with these sophomores. But the, but DeAndre Swift is going to be a key cog in this wheel and he's going to get plenty of, of opportunities and, and, and touches. And they may not be the sexiest touches ever, but garbage time Blake Bortles was fucking fantastic. So, <laughs> and a lot of Jaguars lived off of that. So garbage this, time. This man averaged seven point eight yards per reception. So, right. And over the over the good over the last four years, the Chargers fielded a top eleven offense all four seasons. Lim was there ninth in twenty twenty, tenth in twenty nineteen, eleventh in twenty eighteen, and fourth in twenty seventeen. So you know, say what you will. And Anthony Lynn was a running backs coach before this. So, you know, he's got a special place for those guys. Uh, well, let's just talk about what they got going on up front. While they may not have the best weapons outside, they are fucking curating something up front. They have Taylor Decker, who's been there for a long time, who's been absolutely great. They have Frank Rag now, who's been absolutely outstanding at the center position. And then this year, they got gifted Penne Sewell, who is mm. an absolute fucking monster. He allowed one sack over 1,376 snaps in his last two seasons in Oregon. He's going to anchor that fucking line. Um, Rag now permitted just two sacks on 996 offensive snaps and earned a 74.9 grade from Pro Football Focus, ranking him six amongst 38 qualifying centers. Then a season ago, Ragnow failed to allow a sack in 
929 games, only allow, only having three penalties called against him, good for PFF grade 80.3. So one of those, the first one was two years ago. This last one was a year ago. Um, and then the third round pick here, uh, Jonah Jackson, he's looking to improve on a solid rookie campaign that he just had. Uh, maybe they'll kick the, the vet. I'm not even – via Tali Hobbs. How I don't even know. I got nothing. Just a, a long, ridiculous name. Maybe they kick him to guard. Um, he was okay. He wasn't great the last season. Probably the weak link on that line. We'll see where he ends up. Uh, they still have uh, Tyrell Crosby for depth in that line. Right now, PFF has them ranked as a top 10 offensive line. So they haven't seen that kind of offensive line play in a long time. Penny Sewell's going to be good. Jonah Jackson was just a third round pick last year. He should be getting better and was pretty solid last year. Decker's been a, a, a great player and Frank Ragnow, they just made him like the highest paid center in the league. So they love that guy and I love what they're doing, which all leans well to like, hey, we're going to ground and pound. We're going to rebuild a little bit here. DeAndre Swift and um, Jamal Williams should get plenty of opportunities. Yeah, will they be in the red zone a ton? Probably not, but I love the uh, the idea of the amount of opportunities that Swift is going to he's going to get some good carries and he's also going to get uh some some fantastic passes out of the backfield. All right, here we go. Halapuli Vati Viti. All right. There we go. It was an eagle. I know that. He was an eagle, and he, he's had some ups and downs, so he's maybe the weak point. Of, but that, if he's your weak point, I love this offensive line. I love what they're doing. A lot of that there isn't, there's no weapons there, but Swift is the weapon, Hawkinson's the weapon, and that's what they're going to be doing. And so, like, for that, I, I've almost talked myself into Swift being the number two guy in this whole, you know, algorithm <laughs> of uh, sophomore running backs here. What are your thoughts? Man, that's tough. It's tough because it's just it's such an easy cop out to be like it's the Lions. Yeah, they're it's terrible. It's the Lions. They suck. Jared Goff sucks. Yeah, but the more I dug into this and the more I see what's going on, I just feel like there's going to be quality run uh, plays for for Swift, and there's just going to be so much trashy garbage time for him to catch balls out of the backfield. Austin Eckler just sits right there, and they, I mean, in what world is DeAndre Swift not a better prospect than Austin Eckler was? Absolutely. So, yeah, no disrespect to Austin no, Eckler. Austin Eckler's been great. Yeah, I mean, Swift's a freak. Swift's a freak athlete. Right. Well, I, don't and, need and, you to, I don't need you to make a decision right now. We'll get through the last two guys, and then you make your decision. All right. I, I, I can't be mad at taking him, too. I, I have some Swift, so I love hearing that. Uh, I want to project the targets to Antonio Gibson. Yeah. You know? I really want to do that. Yeah, I mean, so. We'll get there. We'll get there. I mean, let's, we, you want to go Gibson next or, Do, or Dobbins next? Let's go Dobbins. All right. So Dobbins. Because I could easily take Dobbins at the two. So Dobbins, Dobbins was my second favorite running back coming into this class. But then where they landed, I thought Clyde and where he landed. And the same thing I just said about the opportunity, the system that he's in, what he's doing. I'm going to I put Clyde as number two. I like the talent of Dobbins better than Clyde. Um, and I still love J.K. Dobbins. But. You have a running quarterback who obviously helps the run game. J.K. Dobbins absolutely destroyed the back end of the season the last six games. But to project that out to be what if this was a full season, like you can't do that. That's a little ridiculous. They did lose Mark Ingram, which he he did have a decent amount right. of carries. It wasn't like it wasn't no, like the no, year no. before. He, Mark he was Ingram, basically but. almost irrelevant in this season for the most part. But Gus Edwards, they brought him back, and Gus is good. They don't throw it to the running backs. They were, and that's the thing. They were. Let's see here. I got it. Lamar somewhere. doesn't. You made. You've made this point. I don't. Probably on air. Definitely off air. Lamar Jackson doesn't want to dump it down to his running back because he can just pull. He can just snap back that rubber band to his and twitch his way up the field for as many yards as he thinks he can throw it to this running back for. The Ravens so he were, doesn't dump it down. The Ravens were thirty-one out of thirty-two Hate in running back that. targets last year. That's the worst. So that doesn't make you feel super great about you know Dobbins and and being that he's pro he's probably going to be the one A to the one B because he is such a good pass catcher. He could he be is utilized. A, he is a good that. pass catcher. And shit, I mean, this year they could just be like he he could end up catching fifty fucking balls. Like who really knows? That's that's the ridiculousness of this whole thing that we're doing right now um no, and, you gotta and, tell and, me and exactly I'm, what's going right. on tell he, me he you better be right balls, too. but projecting off of what's been going on with lamar jackson and the other 
negative to yes, the running quarterback opens up so much for. Uh, a running back, but it also in the red zone right. could eliminate those easy six point plays for a lot of running backs, which Dobbins could get those taken, you know, at least a handful of those taken away from him. And, and then put Gus Edwards in there. Another few could be vultured from him. Right. Uh, and, because and maybe Dobbins gets you all the way down there and Gus runs it in or Lamar gut runs it in. And then you don't throw it to him, which, hey, Nick Chubb absolutely slayed it off 18 catches last year. So at you know Dobbins is is a freak athletically, right? Um, and and maybe they do say, hey Lamar, I need you to check it down a couple more times. And if the problem if Dobbins is, Dobbins would his just own if number, there would man. just be the floor of some receptions, it would I would be Dobbins number two all day. Yeah. Um, but and I, I want to just off of gut instinct, I want to take Dobbins because I like that offense. I like the rushing. The Ravens ability. are always good. The offensive line's always good. Right. The defense Greg is Roman always good. Has never been a great evolver of his scheme, which is probably what may be hurting Lamar Jackson taking steps forward. But we'll see what happens here. Also, the skill positions they've surrounded him with. This should be the best team that they've ever had offensively. Right. Yeah, they haven't given him a lot of wide receiver weapons. They've know? been a top scoring threat in the league and now or a top scoring offense in the league and now you're adding all of this more firepower and more versatility. So, you know, should get even better. Uh so, you know, a lot of great things for Dobbins, but there's just some negatives that maybe some of the other guys don't necessarily have where I like the talent level more than a lot of these other guys, but there's but there's a couple got of some things that detract and he's got some, he's got a quarterback that can vulture touchdowns. He's got some competition, and he's got. It's hard to give him a bunch of catches. It's hard right. to say here you're going to get these catches. So we're playing PPR because that's what you should be playing, and we're we're picking hairs here. We're splitting hairs. We're not picking them. We're splitting them. <laughs> we're splitting hairs, trying to figure out which one of these goddamn sophomore running backs to take. And it's, it's like tough, I man. just want them all. I sort of kind of like them all. It's like Pokemon. Yeah. <laughs> Got to catch, catch them all. Ash did. Yeah. <laughs> did he? I don't know. He had a team, Brock and yeah. somebody else, a girl you know or whatever. way too much about this. It was our childhood. What are you talking about? Were you ever out in the park on your phone no, searching no, for Pokemon? No, no, no. But I did, but I did uh, have the first uh, set of Pokemon cards. And really? Like an idiot sold them at a had a Pokemon sale, hung up posters. I mean, I made a little bit of money. I made some scratch as a kid, but I'm, you know, I don't exactly remember which Charizard I had, but I had a fucking a pretty good Charizard. <laughs> now there's, now there's some Charizards that are worth ridiculous amounts of money. There's yeah. some of these original pack Pokemon. I never had the cards, but I had the, I had the super, the uh, Game Boy yeah. in color mm -hmm. edition. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was as close to Zelda as a game could get. Because Zelda was a strong fucking game on the on the on the Game Boy, mm -hmm. and and Pokemon was like a geeked up Zelda. But it was frustrating. You can't catch all these motherfuckers. Mm. Like you can't even. You don't even get the opportunity to. I was a little. I too saw old. Pikachu one time, and he got out of my fucking weak ass little, little ball, and it was like fuck. I was a little too sucks. old for catching Pokemon in the park, but I. I, yeah. I, I Whatever. You're not, dude. There's some grown fucking adults no. looking like idiots out there. I'm in over the park. here playing fantasy football. All right. Yeah. All right. I don't have time for <laughs> childish games. Why'd you even bring it up? I don't know. Because he had to catch them all. All right. Let's go to Antonio Gibson. Last but not least. Um, you want to take? You want to get a little Gibson love in here? You got anything for me? I mean, he only had seventy-seven touches. How could he be any good? Yeah, I mean, the Washington Football Team had one hundred and sixty-one uh, running back targets, which is basically the most. Um, and McKissick had a hundred and fucking ten of them, and Gibson had forty-four. And now McKissick's out of there. He's not necessary. He's not out of there. McKissick's not out of there. I don't think so. I thought he's on another team. I don't think so. No. You look it up. I'm pretty uh, yeah, sure McKissick's you, you gone, thing. isn't it? I don't think He's so. He's gone. Isn't he like in Tampa Bay or something? No. No? Totally got that wrong? Totally got that wrong. I thought for sure that he was out of there. He's still a he's still Washington Oh, for Redskin. sure. God damn it. Well, there goes my... Oh, well, move him back. Move Gibson back. How are we going to give him all those targets? Regardless, it... There's almost 0% chance that Gibson another year in here and the <laughs> difference between those two players and how good they are. Like, McKissick could still get plenty of targets, but I could see it easily swapping from McKissick being the 44 targets and Gibson being the 110. They either, have either talked way, up Gibson either way, in the receiving game. Either way, they're probably not targeting the running back that many times. They have a better quarterback situation who will risk it. And throw it downfield, and they have a much better offense with 
adding, you know, they had Terry McLaurin, who's fantastic. Then they add Curtis Samuel. They take a, they take a, um, a swing on Deami uh, Brown. Brown. They have Logan Thomas. Uh, so everything got, got a little bit better for the offense. So I can't see the running backs quite getting as many check downs. You know, Alex Smith is a check down Charlie. Um, Fair. And so, you know, and, probably and, not going to lead the league in running back targets again this year, but I could easily see the amount of targets being so weighted in McKissick's favor, being more weighted in Gibson's favor and McKissick just kind of being the cleanup guy for uh, Gibson this year. So that's the kind of the way I'm reading that situation, which is why, you know, I have a hard time not elevating Gibson uh, a good bit. But I could have sworn McKissick was out of there. That totally not. changes everything. I can't just give him 100 targets now. No. Can't just give Antonio Gibson 100 targets. But I, he was raw, man. He wasn't even playing running back. No. And this man came in here and was averaging basically a fantasy point per touch. Uh, I think it was like .9. It wasn't quite as efficient as I thought it was, but it, it feel, felt like any time they gave Antonio Gibson the ball, he got you a point every time he touched it. By the end of the season, week 17, Antonio Gibson was RB13, so one out of being an RB1. Almost. With 110 targets going to J.D. McKissick. And probably not very many carries. Like I don't know how many carries he got, but J.D. Gibson wasn't was seeing a lot of work. I no, mean, he had he, to work his way into that, that shit. There was plenty of games, uh, definitely in the beginning of the season, where he was barely not even seeing half the snaps. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think six games he had more than half the snaps, and it peaked at 69%. So many games. On Thanksgiving. He, right. When he fucking wild out, had 20 carries, and five receptions, 136 yards, and three touchdowns. You're like, oh, shit, Antonio Gibson, if they would just feed him, which that's the only, let's see, he had 20 carries one other time in the season. And and then it's it's a bunch of 9, 13, 9, 11, 9, 10. Like, couldn't get very many carries. Was seeing a decent amount of targets and receptions. Barely playing half the snaps. I think overall he played... 45% of the snaps. There is no chance that doesn't increase, increase by at least by 50%. That's what I'm saying. I feel like it's a good it's a good swap around for McKissick and, and Gibson. And he still averaged 14 and a half fantasy points per game. Efficiency. And so this 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 team should get better. Um, it's debatable whether the Fantastic offensive line defense. will get better or not. We can get into what they've done with the offensive line situation if you want. Sure, give me a, give me a rundown if you got it. Um, Just a- I think they could be pretty good. They have one of the best guards in the league, Brandon Scherf. Um, they've really been like dragging him along. He played his out his four year contract. He had the fifth year option because he was a first uh, first round pick, and then he's going into his second franchise tender. So he signed the first one, played out last year on the franchise tag. They franchised his ass again, and he signed it. So they could extend him, but the fact that they haven't already, and he's one of the best guards in the league, like he's made four Pro Bowls, and last year he was an All-Pro first team. Right. First all, team All-Pro. All pros. There's only like 12 of those guys. Exactly. Right? That's, or 11. That's, that's good. So, well, that's, 11 that's on good. offense. That's good. Right. So it's probably Quentin Nelson on the other, like the second guard. Like, it's him and Quentin Nelson, like, like the best guards in the league, and you won't shore this guy up. I don't quite understand it, but at least they have him for this year, so that bodes well. Uh, they did. They did sign uh, their center to a four-year, forty million dollar extension. Chase uh, Rollier. I'm gonna go with Rollier. Sure. I don't know. Rollier. Sounds good to me. Yeah. Um, and he he was playing really well. Uh, he'll be playing. Let's see. He played all 16 games last year. Only gave up one sack. They made a surprise cut recently after minicamp. They cut Morgan Moses, uh, their right tackle, who was. Who was paired up with Brandon Scherf? They called him the um, man. I, did I did I get rid of that line? It was something about war pigs. The the war daddies. War daddies. They were the war daddies. They cut one of the war daddies, so now they just have one daddy. They bring in free agent Charles Leno from the Bears on a one year, five million dollar contract. I think he has the edge to be the starting left tackle coming off of a good year with the Bears. Uh, they also have Sadiq Charles, who was on the squad uh, that, that they played well for like one game he was banged up they they like him a lot i think he'll throw some competition in there they drafted tackle sam cosme out of texas in the second round uh they have they have cornelius lucas 
uh, who played well last year, that he was their left tackle for most of the year, gave up just two sacks, four quarterback hits, 14 total pressures. He's going to probably compete for the right side of that line. Um, they have Wesh Schweitzer, who's presumably going to play the left guard, and they have other bodies. They got Eric Flowers. Overall, this is a cohesive group. They're they're coming. Most of them have been here. It's very cohesive. Um, and they have depth. You know, I'm not exactly sure who's going to win these yeah, jobs. So like they have that. competition. Like and one thing that Rivera does well, trenches. Right, right. Have faith Defense, in. I have faith in Rivera and figuring that thing out. Yeah. So th- I think that bodes well for Antonio Gibson. Like all these things. Maybe aside from not having not having McKissick out of there, getting that all this out stuff of his is, side. is 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 boding well for 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 Antonio Gibson. They've been praising him off se- in the off season. He has a full off season now coming into this year. All of these guys pretty much played running back their entire lives, or at least a good chunk of it. Antonio Gibson's the only one that really wasn't there, and now he probably has the biggest steps to gain out of a full season and off season. Right. Agreed. And and you just saw it like and just with what he was, you saw at times where like he's bursting at the seams. You're hold you're 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 hanging on to the seat of you're your pants your when, when he's you're holding your butt when he gets the ball in his hands. He just had it. Yeah. Um, and uh, it was a uh, lot of fun to watch. Two two Jurassic Park quotes tonight. I love it. Hold on to your butts. All right. So let's let's get down to brass taxes. Let's put them in an order. Mm. It's gonna be tough. It'll change tomorrow. It'll change the day want after. It. It's Clyde Edwards for me, and then I think it's Swift. Ah, gosh, it's so hard to say. Yeah, and then I think it's I think it's I think it's Gibson and Dobson and Acres. I think that's where I'm at. Damn, dude. But I, but I mean, no, I, think, I still I think, don't know what to do. I think I think it's just man. Like I started this whole thing off with, like it's ridiculous to come out here and say that. Yeah, this is this is the order, and this is the order you got to take them in. I, I want to lay out some information, some my opinions, some your opinions. You can kind of hopefully it helps you make a decision on where you were. I try to be open minded about these things and, and let it happen and, and see where the value is and see Clyde Edwards to me is the value, um, yeah. but he, he deserves to be at the top for me. And then I've talked myself into Swift. He, he's it sucks, but like I could easily put Gibson or Dobson up there. I could easily put Akers up there. But for me, I'm, I'm sticking with my gut. I'm going Clyde Edwards a right now. I'm going Swift. I'm going Gibson. I'm going Dobbins. I'm going Acres. I'm gonna. I'm gonna have to switch it up. I'm gonna go. I'm. I'm. I'm with you at the beginning and the end, but I think I gotta go Dobbins second. I think I gotta stick with Dobbins second. I don't that know was, why. That was my. That was if if we were doing this from last year, that's basically how it would have played out. Gibson, except you know, Gibson would have been last, but um, uh, Dobson, could, Dobbins would have been been the number two for me. He, I think he's the most talented out of these guys. Yeah. Um, and that's what I'm gonna roll with, I guess. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna let's let's see if we can get him some more targets. Come on, Lamar. Let's let's save your body. You, the the worst thing you could do for the long for like getting this long term contract is get hurt this year. Right. So he might should be looking out for his own self a little bit. If he could get it together up here and maybe dump it down a little bit, and maybe the coaches want him to do that too because this dude is so lethal, man. All you, you're just helping yourself out, man. You're just helping yourself out. It helps your completion percentage. It helps all these fucking stats if you can dump it down to your running back. And this Dobbins all, so electric. This also isn't just one year. This is a this is a long term deal here. I could easily swap Dibs, Dobbs, Dobbins for uh, Gibson here. I feel, I feel like I'm keeping Acres at the end of it. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of hate mail for that. Whatever. Yeah. This is how I feel. I've, I've done I've done all my research. I've looked at all these guys. I've watched game film of all of them. I looked at all the stats. I've looked at some analytics. I've done all of those things, and that's kind of how line we're, research. Right. Yeah. It's kind of where I'm at. We mocked it up, mocked it. We put ourselves on the clock over and over again to see how we feel. I think I'll go. I'll and go. at the end of the day, I want all of these guys. Right. I want every single point. one of them. That's the point. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Get you, get you two of these guys if you can. Get Agreed. you two of them. Trade I don't back. think you can go wrong. I don't think you can go wrong. Trade back if you don't feel a certain type of way. Try to move back a spot. And if and if you want to take a guy, take him. Um, I, I think I'll go. I, I think I'll go. Clyde Dobbins, Swift, Gibson, Acres. And, and and tomorrow I could put Gibson at, at number two, and, and the next day I could put I don't know I just it just is hard to say let's go Swift you know I love the dude and I hear everything you're saying it's just hard it's hard to get behind the Lions in general because they just not, they, yeah. they they ruined Calvin Johnson they almost ruined Matt Stafford and now what we'll see what happens with with Swift you know yeah agreed.
So new management, new regime. I like where they're going. I like the the trench bolstering. Uh, whether or not you agree with, I know. Oh, new caps and oh, Dan Campbell and new caps. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at what the fuck's actually going on. Yeah, maybe he's not the best at talking to things. I like the GM. What is the kneecaps? He's, we're going to bite kneecaps and we're going to do it. And everybody thinks it's it's just like the coolest thing ever. And they're like, Dan Campbell doesn't know what he's doing. He's going to talk about biting kneecaps. I thought it was like a sex <laughs> thing. No, it's just everybody's. That's, that's the thing to be on. on he said something stupid in a press conference. He wears way too much hair gel like he's got Depp from 1993. And... You know, I, I don't know if he's the coach of, of what they need to be doing, but I love what they just did in the draft. I love how they're building from inside out. Um, and it seems like I like the GM. I like the relationship that seems to be going on in the building. It just it seems like it might, hopefully it's a little bit different landscape for the Lions. And I just like everything that I'm seeing offensive line wise. I think opportunity and touch wise for Swift, that's just even though it's shitty. It seems like there's going to be a plenty of opportunity, and I'm not all that worried about Jamal Williams. I mean, yeah, he's going to get some touches and probably cap Swift from being the the 25 carry a, a game guy. But give me if you can give me 15 carries and a, and a just a boatload of fucking targets, five to me. ten targets. Yeah, I mean, he's all the what that was they got, man. So yeah, do we throw a wrench in this thing at all and say where are you going to put Chubb and 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 Zeke in this mix? No, I can't do that right now. Can't do it. Can't do it right now. Next, can't do we'll, it. we'll do more mocks and and we'll be we'll talk about it. But now that we've laid all this out, I feel like I don't have to do it on air as much. I can just bring points and parts and pieces. That's why we wanted to take the time, not put it on there. We wanted to spend some time talking about this. That was the whole point of this exercise. I know some of y'all aren't going to like that. There's so much information. You just want the list right off the rip and move just on. Just give me the guys and shut the but, fuck up. Right. God well, I want to tell you why and how I came up with with where I'm at, and uh, you know, there's plenty of other. Uh, you know, reasons that you could come up with for the whys and hows, but this is what I got. This is what I'm going with. Um, this is some meat and potatoes tonight. And uh, I appreciate y'all. It's like offensive line. What are y'all talking about offensive yeah. lines for? <laughs> appreciate y'all listening. Appreciate far. you hanging out with us. Um, hopefully you learned something. Hopefully it helped you make a decision because that's really at the end of the day what my – I, I don't want to just be like, this is who I'm taking. And this is, you know, you got to take this guy and you're an idiot if you don't. Like, I, I want to lay out all the facts and figures and let, let you make help help you make a decision uh, for yourself. Right. And at the end of the day, you got to go what's within your gut. You know, we're trying to help feed your gut. We're trying to give you these uh, meat no, potatoes Jason, That's how you make mistakes. You just have to go with the numbers and the Atlanta analytics because there's no, uh, there's yeah, no well, gut. There's no gut based on that. So. Then you get stuck with Nikhil Harry on your team and you pass on DK Metcalf. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm all set. But they all have their pluses and minuses. It's a yeah. common. It's all pieces of the puzzle. You Put need, it all together. That's where I'm at. You need to have I'm an at. open mind. You need to take in all the information and, and make an educated decision. And, and go with what's going to make you happy. You know, if you got to have a guy take them yeah. you know because you're gonna kill yourself if you don't yeah so all right kids appreciate y'all we'll see you next time peace <laughs>